Well, hey everybody, welcome back. Everybody thought I might have uh, left the railroad scene for a while. I was just taking a break, and we're getting back in the swing of videos today, taking a look at the recent re recently r announced and released. Uh, let's try that again. Recently released EMD SD45 from Scale Trains. Now this is a Phase 2B2. Sounds almost like a plane, but it's not. Uh, SD45, this is Norfolk and Western Bicentennial. I cannot talk today for some reason. Uh, now this was out at Virginia Museum of Transportation, I believe, because I've seen this somewhere in person. I believe that's where it was, uh, this model. So it is still a real locomotive. I don't believe it's running, but it is still a real locomotive that's uh, in a museum. So you should check it out along with all the other SD45s they offer. Here's the manual. It's very long and very zoomed in, so you're not going to see much, but it goes over functions and disassembly and basic programming notes and introduction and warranty and grooming of Mike Hopkins beard. So all that is inside the manual, except for that last thing I mentioned. That's not really in there, um, but let's go ahead and take a look. I'm going to zoom out a little bit at the SD45. So typical foam wrapped model here in a blister as they call it. That's what all this plastic's called. I've learned some lingo there. There's those older barcodes they used back in the day. I always forget the name of them and everybody tells me every time. And I still don't remember. I want to say ACI or ACL. YMCA. Something like that. Now, scale trains tricks me every time, but I'm finally getting used to it. When you pull a model out of the box, there's these little truck immobilizers, I call them. I'm sure they may have a different name for them. And they're the same color as the truck, and the, I almost set the model down, and it tips this time. I have caught myself. We are making progress in the world. We'll remove the handrail protectors. This thing is very weighty for being such a short locomotive, so we're going to take a look at all that now. All right, it's a short, cute little bite-sized locomotive. So I can fit the whole thing in the screen and still be fairly zoomed in. But this is just a great looking locomotive. I think a beautiful design. Uh, you got a circle of stars here. I'm going to guess 13 stars, 1776 on the side. There is a cab interior. I don't know that we're going to be able to look at that based on the lighting. I'll try to zoom in, but it's going to be tough. So right here is a good view to go over some of the details. You got a firecracker antenna, you got a high mounted bell. There's a sand filler hatch actually in between the bell bracket. Coupler, I'm sorry. <laughs> Separately applied grab irons, couplers down here, not up there. You got the horn here, which is a five chime horn. There is safety tread on the walkway, battery box doors, uh, the windows, I believe, or they move, but appear to be somewhat stationary. Yeah, they're moving a little bit. I don't know that I would mess with that too much. So I think they're probably meant to be stationary. You got the dustbin hatch up here. There are little tiny lift rings as well adorning the top. Exhaust. Dynamic brake fans as we work our way back. Dynamic brake housing and Norfolk and Western. The NW is right there. Nice red and white stripe area with the blue up front on the cab, obviously. Peaked behind the uh, cab. Or the front, I think, is how it's typically ran, is a windshield wiper. So this end would be trailing. It's typically ran going this way. So, as you can see, there's dynamic brake fans. Nice compartment detail, as you can see there. There is tread on the walkways. Did I mention that already? Handrails look pretty good. A little bit of wave to them. You can see for yourself and kind of be your own judge. I just show it in full HD so you can get the opinion you want. A little F designator right there indicates that's how it's supposed to run. It run. So that's uh, forward. There's a brake wheel right there. More compartment detail and radiators. 
there, radiator fans. The radiator forward on this is how it's supposed to run. I believe, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but that's what I've always known was that F means forward. So, MU receptacle there, or MU stand I should say. Stanchions and a safety chain. A little coupler drop step there that's stationary. And on the front, there's accessory hoses and a Skeltrain's muddle coupler. This is a rivet counter version, so highly detailed. As you can see, a grab right there. And class lights. We'll talk about those later. We'll talk about a whole bunch of lighting later. There's a coupler cut lever too that's kind of disguising itself. Probably viewed best right from this angle because it's also red. And as we turn the corner, you can see a little better the lift ring detail there. Those are some very finely detailed and installed lift rings that are very realistic and just uber thin. I don't know how they do it sometimes. All right, so some basic fuel tank detail. You see the blower housing right behind the cab. It's the blower housing there. So that protrudes. And there's a little basket here. I forget what that's for. I'm sure somebody will tell me. Emergency shutoff buttons for fuel tank and speed recorder, I believe, on the truck detail. A little hard to see as the black absorbs all the light, but there you have the ST45 in all of its glory. Now I have reviewed the ST45 before, so if you want to go check that review out, a lot of that's still pertinent for this release, but this is the first that's a high hood. We're going to hit F8 to start it up, just like uh, ESU decoders do. board lights look great. I'll show you that more in the dark later. We go with uh, some functions here, not all of them by far, but a few. Sorry, there's a prime mover notch because I accidentally had it on one speed step. Horn sounds great as it kind of quills, if you want to call it that. F3 is coupler. F4 is dynamic brake when moving. Much you can hear that. I'm not hearing much from the dynamic brakes. There's a section for it, so I think it exists on this locomotive. Five is DPU lights. We'll cover those in the dark. Six ditch lights, which don't exist on this model. Seven is not assigned. Eight is start up and shut down, as we mentioned before. F9 is drive hold. Or you hit F9, you turn up your throttle to whatever speed step you want, and you'll hear the prime mover increase in RPM, and then you release F9 and it'll go to that speed step. Independent brake F10, radiator F11, there's a lot of sounds we won't cover, but that's just an example. Just going to pick a random one here, F21's handbrake. You can hear that ratchet up <coughs> a little hard over the prime mover, but there you have it. All right, we got the AccuTrack 2. I realize this is reverse, but I'm running it this way anyway. 
I think it looks better. We're gonna get this up to. I'm just gonna go to one speed step here. I just wanted to approach the speedometer a little faster. Looks like it's not really moving enough at speed step one. So we're at two now. You can see the smoothness of the drive. I did have to take off track power and put it back on because it did not move. I think uh, the decoder was confused and thought it was in drive hold. I essentially have to go to three speed steps or we're going to be waiting forever. But very, very slow speed control. A little bit of a lurch, but at three it's completely smoothed out, so that's what we'll take our speed at in the speedometer here. Half a mile an hour at three speed steps, so very good. Half a scale mile an hour at three speed steps. We'll take this off so you can see a little better what we're dealing with in terms of smoothness of the drive. That's four. That's five. All the lurches are out at three, and I think the only reason they exist is just because the speed control is so slow. I mean, if you're at speed step three and you're at half a scale mile an hour, that's just amazing speed control. They're working really hard to make sure that this locomotive crawls at slow speeds. Hear the prime mover pick up a little bit, and brake squeal as you, or as we reverse and go in reverse. This right here, guys, even as slow as this is, is speed step 11 out of 128 on my MRC Prodigy Elite 2, which is on its way out soon. So there you have slow speed control. All right, a little close detail here, but we're really here to do coupler height. So we'll just set that down dead on to me move to the front and I am away from this hump that happens to be in the center of my layout that one might be a smidgen low you be the judge but as we have it here we can do a little miniature run by kind of just drag it along so you can see the detail of this locomotive up close I mean beautiful detail nice truck detail, just well executed in terms of detail all over. All right, so lights are down. You can see the number boards here. We put the locomotive in the mood with some nice low lighting to show us all our lighting features. There's truck lighting there. The crews use that to see if locomotive is moving at night. Shines light on the ground. That's on both sides. And then we have class lights as you can see there each time you hit f5 you change color so off color one two three off i'm colorblind i think it's red white green off but i could be wrong or it's a different order but that's essentially it so really cool multi-colored light uh class lights on this i'll switch it around so you can see the other end as you can see, it's still running because it has a pretty good capacitor in it. So if you got truck problems, or track problems, I should say, you will be able to run over the dead spots without any issues. There's the number boards on the back. Number boards are beautifully done. Some of the best number boards I've seen. They're evenly lit. They look realistic. They have a golden white, and they're not shining through anywhere. Scooting up a little bit, there's that other truck light on both sides um, so that you can see if the ground's moving or not as the crew. So that are the, that are, those are the lighting features of this locomotive. Quick pull test here. Three point seven ounces. Actually, you went up to 3.9 for a second, so almost 60 cars with this little guy. It's pretty impressive. All right, we're going to weigh this as the last step, and then we'll do a recap on the model. Oops, I forgot to tear it out there. It's been a
been a long day, guys. 20.4 ounces. It's 578 grams. Or one pound, 4.4 ounces. They really cram some weight in this little locomotive that's pretty short, really. And speaking of pretty short, it's just under nine and a half inches, coupler to coupler. And then the body itself, well, we're looking at, you know, nine inches. So pretty short locomotive for over a pound of weight and the pulling power to be able to pull almost 60 cars. That's pretty impressive. But, you know, what What else would you expect from scale trains? They do a great job. Uh, See-through fan detail on the top. You can probably get a glimpse up now. Here's a good roof view as well while we're at it. But just going to recap this model. Pretty good model. Good NMRA compliance on the NMRA gauge, which I did off screen, and the coupler height, which I did on screen. One seemed maybe slightly off, but you guys be the judge. And... Just a great locomotive overall uh, in terms of sound. I think it sounds excellent. It operates very smoothly once you get a little quicker on the speed steps because the speed steps are so slow that you're looking at probably like 0.2, two tenths of a mile an hour when you're at speed step one out of 128. So uh, they're just trying to get really slow speeds, but get up to about two or three and you, everything smooths out pretty good and you're still at half a mile an hour, which is impressive. So overall, impressed as usual with the scale train screw and what they've done with this model, but you be the judge with what I've shown you. A lot of the tests I do are completely objective, so you can be the judge of whether you want the model, the weight, the pull test, the operation sound with Dolby, surround sound, the NMRI compliance, etc. Those are all meant for you to be the judge and see if the model lives up to your standards. So with that said, there's a lot of other SD45s uh, on scaletrains.com, I think, from this release. But, uh, you know, I've kind of been living in a fog the last few weeks uh, trying to get adjusted to life after the military. So uh, and trying to find a house. So hopefully one day we're off this format and back on a layout soon. But with that said, we'll leave you with no run by because there's nowhere to run. But we'll see you next time right here on my channel. Take care.